Hello, good evening and welcome to this new edition of RTD's English News. The top stories are... The head of state received the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Somaliland. The Prime Minister unveiled the new security measures. Those were the top stories. Thank you for joining us. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Margheli, has received today a large ministerial delegation of uh, Somaliland led by its Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Corporation, Mr. Saad Ali Shire. At the outcome of this uh, discussion with the President Gelli, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Corporation of the Republic of Somaliland has indicated to the national press that they have benefited from the courtesy visit of the Head of State for the warm welcoming and hospitality him and his delegation have received. Mr. Saad Ali Shire then stated that the discussion have focused on the ways and means of a strengthening of already privileged relation of a friendship and cooperation between Djibouti and Somaliland. The ministerial delegation led by Mr. Saad Ali Shire also include the Minister of Industry of Somaliland, Mr. Shuaib Mohamed Musa. This hearing was held in the presence of the representative of Somaliland in Djibouti, Mr. Mohamed Warsama. The head of state, His Excellency Ismaili Murgeli, has sent a message of solidarity to his Tunisian counterpart, Mr. Beji K. Desepsid, whose country has been targeted before yesterday on Tuesday by a terrorist attack that has left 13 dead and 20 more injured. In his message, the President of the Republic, who has strongly condemned this heinous and despicable act, has addressed its heartfelt condolences to Mr. Beji. The people and the government of Djibouti also join me to express their solidarity and compassion to the families and relatives of the victims, as well as to the whole of the Tunisian brotherly people, has written the President Gele, the head of state, who has also expressed the hope of a speedy recovery to the injured ones, has described the partners and perpetrators of this attack as agents who work for barbaric causes. His Excellency Smaile Mergele has ended his message by reiterating his condolences to the President Beji and to the whole of the friendly people of Tunisia. Conducted against a bus carrying members of this country's presidential guards, this attack took place in the city center of the Tunisian capital. Always concerning the attack in Tunisia, Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the fatal attack on a bus carrying members of the Tunisian Presidential Guard on Tuesday. In a statement post of a social media on Wednesday, Islamic State identified the bomber by the nickname Abdu Abdu Allah in Tunisia or Abu Abdullah the Tunisian. The attack on the bus killed 13 people as it was uh, traveling through the capital Tunis. The statement included a photo of a masked man wearing what appeared to be an explosive vest. Tunisia's government has implemented a nationwide state of emergency and imposed a nighttime curfew of the capital in response to the attack. It is the third deadly attack Islamic State has claimed in Tunisia this year following a shooting rampage of a popular Tunis art museum and a brick hotel in the resort city of Sousse. A prudential degree has been put in place to ensure and strengthen the security measures. Let's hear it from the, minister, from the Prime Minister Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohamed. Depuis les récents attentats. Since the recent successive attacks that have occurred in Paris and then in Bamako and in Tunis, the security issues occupy the whole world news in our country, which have already experienced the attack carried out by the terrorist movement of Al-Shabaab. Ali of Al-Qaeda group decide by a presidential decree, measures and exceptional provision have been put in place in order to strengthen the security as well as the surveillance of this land, maritime and earth. 
Northern Territories. As well, on the sideline of November 24 Council of Ministers, by degree, the President of the Republic has just ordered that in order to ensure the protection of people and property in a situation of exceptional risk of territories weighing on the whole of the international community, exceptional measures of security will be applicable throughout the territory of the Republic of Djibouti, including the territorial weather and airspace. By elsewhere, the monitoring around the sensitive points such as embassies or yet the uh, countermand of force of friendly countries in the Republic of Djibouti are also threatened. Any crowd control on the Republic space is strictly prohibited. The application of this degree is placed in order to coordination in many quality of Prime Minister and will be responsible for its implementation. The Minister of Justice, the Minister of Interior, the Minister of Defense, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Authority of the Republic, as well as the whole of the Head of the State Majors and Director General of the Defense Forces, Security, and Intelligence have concluded the uh, Prime Minister. In the Republic of Djibouti concludes its cross-examination of Mr. Abdurrahman Borre and witness of a DP war in the case of a High Court of the United Kingdom. For more details, let's listen to this comment. In London, November 25, 2015, the Chief Counsel of the Republic of Djibouti has recently completed its cross examination of Abdurrahman Bore, the former chairman of the authorities of Port and Free Zone of Djibouti, and that of a number of witnesses of the port operator DP War. In the course of a cross examination which lasted four days before the High Court in London, the plaintiffs have accused Mr. Bore for having accepted bribers from DP War in order to promote the achievement of a better commercial condition for Dubai in its transactions with the Republic of Djibouti. The plaintiffs have urged that by accepting bribers to public entities of Dubai, Mr. Bowery has violated its obligation in quality of representative of principal negotiators of Djibouti and has undermined the position of Djibouti with regard to the construction, operation and management of the continent terminal of Dorale. The Republic of Djibouti has in particular accused Mr. Bore to have deliberately concealed information to the government and to have secretly received overpayment in the personal capacity. Faced with these issues, Mr. Bore considered having received $500,000 of DP war in form of a free service of counsel through an offshore company under his control. It was also recognized that DP war had paid to the amount of a Swiss bank account. The documents relating to the transfer of funds have been provided to the Republic of Djibouti by the Swiss authorities. A review of the contracts of counsel has revealed that the alleged service have never been provided and that in case where they will have been supplied they were in a secret and a violation of its obligation the judge has called these contracts as deceptions during his testimony mr bore has not contradict with the fact that through the payment received in the framework of the service of a council flame and another contract relating to the security service, he had called more than 1.3 billion US dollar DP war. Mr. Bore has admitted to the court that he had not advised the president of the existence of this contract or payment, claiming that it thought that this is necessary. In the same vein, Mr. Bore has obtained without informing the president the promise of, to obtain a participation of 15% in the local subsidiary of DP War, DP War Djibouti, who was the core partner firm of Djibouti in the container terminal of Dorale. Subsequently, Mr. Bore will receive an indirect participation of 5% in the container terminal of Dorale. First, the price of $1 of a greatly reduced price compared to the market. 
by obtaining this participation in a principal capacity, Mr. Bowie claimed to receive 5% of the dead event and 15% of the cost of the management of DP war for the duration of the consensus agreement of 15 years. Gently, Mr. Bowie has uh, accept the fee of just 5% for the benefit of the Republic without proof that he has in any one time tried to negotiate on behalf of the Republic a royalty greater than which is more compatible with the standards of uh, industry. When the lawyer of the Republic has uh, present the contract of a council and a uh, purchase of action to witness the DP war, including the former responsible for the country and the representative of their international operation they have each declared that they had no knowledge of these agreements and that they could not make on the question of whether the payment made under these agreement constitute or not barbers. Mr. Bore has particularly appealed to no high level official of DP war in the other to refute of the allegation of corruptions. The judge has in fact particularly not their absence there is no Muhammad Sharaf DG in DP war. For example, not Sultan Ahmed bin Suleiman chairman of DP war. We have here the financial director who was very friendly but uh, which we did not really help has also not the judge. As regard to the old terminal horizon, another deployment uh, project in Djibouti supervised by Mr. Bore, the later has uh, negotiated with the uh, ENOC and has uh, won for itself a participation of uh, 30% in the terminal, then everything is not obtaining that a participation of uh, 10% for the Republic. Mr. Bore has then perceived the payment of a framework of another contract of a council within uh, had nothing in common with the real service uh, when counsel for the plaintiff have qualified this contract of a funny Mr. Bore has a reply I have not drafted this document I do not read the document when they paid me I sign Mr. Bore urged that the accusation of the Republic of Djibouti against her are motivated by political reasons and that he has been oppressed by the president since 2007 however during cross examination Mr. Bore has admitted that it was interest in the policy only after having left Djibouti in 2008 he has also admitted that on his departure from Djibouti in 2008 he was on uh, good terms with the president reported in peace in good terms in last place and that in perhaps the most important question Mr. Bora has not explained for what reason the president could even be regarded as a potential revile to the presidency since under the constitution of Djibouti in 2000. The person we uh, deal nationally as Mr. Bora may not uh, stand for a presidential election in spite of uh, its submission during the cross examination, Mr. Bore continues to refute the allegation made against it. The trial, in continuing with the final conclusion to be made in the coming weeks. Concerning the Cyper, the training workshop on the management of information security is organized by the Ministry of Communication in charge of bosses in telecommunications in close collaboration with the International Telecommunications Union has been closed today at the Palace of the People. The event was held in the presence of the Director General of Djibouti Telecom, Mr. Mohamed Asobur, and Dr. Nadir al Safwani, as well as the experts Raqia and Mr. Marwan bin Rashid. <coughs> In addition to the experts of the ITU, this workshop has seen the participation of different institutions, executives also. This workshop, which lasted for five days, had for an objective the management of the cyber security and the strengthening of the capacities of countries less advanced in the area of cyber security. In the course of this training, the participants have been informed about the concepts of safeties, the threat and the vulnerability in line, and on the other hand, the beneficiaries have been trained on the legal aspects of the cyber security. 
This workshop aims to assist in the establishment of a national strategy for cybersecurity specific for Djibouti and taking into account the best practices existing in the sector. And finally, the closing ceremony was completed by the handing over of awards to the participants. One of the participants has expressed herself as the following. Let's listen to her. Cooperation with the uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Media and Telecommunication uh, is organizing a workshop during this week. Uh, it covers uh, five main pillars in cybersecurity, the legal uh, area, the international cooperation, capacity building, and also uh, the, um, what do we call it, the technical bar. Uh, it's very important for Djibouti now to move on and have a cybersecurity strategy and cover all these pillars. Uh, it's very important also to have what we call the computer emergency readiness team uh, because this one, um, the importance of existing of this uh, center will have and uh, incidents among the country and uh, I can see from the participants that they're they are very uh, positive about uh, what's uh, what's after this uh, workshop and uh, hopefully that uh, the um, um, what we call them the decision makers can help uh, to move on this uh, strategy forward News release, faithful to its traditions and eager to promote the culture of peace and tolerance in the region, the Secretary of State for Youth and Sports will organize tomorrow morning in collaboration with the Prefecture of Arta the 90th edition of Africa Peace Walk. This activity organized each year will bring together once more all the lovers of the hiking. As well, it's recommended that participants to comply with the safety instructions which will to give in on the spot by the organizers. An information meeting in turn for the local authorities and responsible for the social program has been held this morning at the UNFD. It was organized by the UNFD in collaboration with the UNICEF. This meeting brought together the mayor of the city of Djibouti, the prefect and president of Bulaus municipality, director of the Department of Health and Education, the Women's Empowerment, Justice and the Youth, as well as the Adidas. This meeting was led by the project coordinators of the UNFD, Ms. Ruqi Ali. The objective of this meeting is the role awareness among local authorities and managers of social program to the importance of this program which aim at the development and promote the empowerment of the communities. The communities set up in the framework of this framework program are visiting the creator through partnership with these authorities and responsible. A workshop of a debate conference on the position of the Sharia against the female genital mutilation was held today at the headquarters of the UNIFD. This workshop was chaired by the coordinator of the UNIFD, Mrs. Sahala, and has seen the participation of the representative of the owners and the representative of the Department of Muslim Affairs. This day of awareness has also seen the presence of many Somali and Ethiopian refugees. This year, the campaign of 16 days will focus on the relationship between military terrorism and the right to education in the situation of violent conflict and the situation of peace. Peace at home is peace in the world. Challenge the militarism and let us put an end to the violence against women was the main objective of the debate conference. Women and girls are victims of the multiple forms of violence. This violence occurs in the home, in the street, at school and at work. Indeed, this violence is an obstacle to the women and girls and it uh, deprives their dignity, their fundamental right and prevent them from the uh, realizing their potential in Djibouti. The eradication of violence based on gender remains one of the most significant challenge and the more prevalent, in fact, since its uh, assumptions of the national sovereignty. The head of state, Mr. Smalmar Gele, has uh, displayed 
its willingness to build a rule of law. This commitment is realized through the ratification of the quasi totality of the international and regional legal in instrument protectors of the, the right and woman in the girl. At the national level, these interests and demonstrated by the considerable effort made on the plain legal instru institutional, social, and economic to promote gender equality, the empowerment of women, and taking into account their specificity in development policy and program. Still in the national news, celebrating 16 days of activism against violence based on the gender. The action consisted of a series of awareness raising and education dominated by the realization of parts of theaters and debate within the community development centers of Djibouti City and on the regions, followed by the debate on the declaration of abandonment of female genital mutilation by young people. The practice of female genital mutilation is one of the most inhuman forms of violence and the more severe that a girl or a woman suffer. More than 76% of women in Djibouti are the victims. Without forgetting all the other forms of physical violence, psychological, economical, as well as the discrimination and stigmatization which women and girls are victimized by individuals and that can concern men and children also. It is in this framework that the NGO, the Voice of the East, in collaboration with the network of young people, YPR Djibouti, and with the support of the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, is intends to fight against the violence based on gender. By undertaking an important action of organizing 16 days of activism against violence. In fact, the network of young peer education in collaboration with the three third troops, the Voice of East, the Secretary of State for Youth and Sport, and with the financial support of UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund, has launched the activities of the 16 days of activism against violence and against women within the CDC of Arheba in the evening of Wednesday night. November 25, the program began with the cultural and musical animation. Lastly, let's recall that this evening is the launch of a broad program of awareness, include the framework of the campaign All Unite to Put an End to the Violence Against Women and Girls in the War, launched by the United Nations, and which will take place in the war between November 25 and December 10, 2015. And now on the continental scene, the Tanzania Zambia Railway and China aid project completed nearly half a century ago will inevitably come up in any discussion of China after the price. But now, that railway is not the only Chinese built road in Africa. Let's listen with more details. A happy reunion like this is no frequent for these Tanzania Zambia railway builders for three countries. Today, their hard experience building that railway together have become interesting memories. We have invented a common language so that we could communicate with our Chinese friends, said John Said. The 80 hundred kilometers Tanzania Zambia railway used to be the main archery through several East African countries. Nearly a millions of tons of material and 50,000 workers from China were involved in the construction. However, over the last decade, the railway had begun to show its age. I have to say the operation of the railway is not satisfying. Lack of funds and maintenance facilities are the major problems. There are only two shifts of passengers, train service a week, Chinese railway expert Professor Li said. Fortunately, modern railways are being built in several countries including Ethiopia and Kenya to replace the old ones built by the colonists many decades ago. A railway between Addis Ababa and the port in Djibouti will be completed soon. This is the first electric railway designed and built overseas by the Chinese. The local people are amazed by the rate of progress of the entire project. I can't imagine how they can do it so fast. During the work, I have learned a lot about railway technologies from my Chinese colleagues. Local rail worker Mahmoud said, the complicated natural condition have brought a lot of challenges for the rail workers. The most difficult things is that all the materials have to be purchased from China. We have to do a lot of preparation for the materials. 
Very few can be obtained from here. This is very different from our previous work in China. But so far everything is going well. Fuxing, general manager of China Railway Engineering, Ethiopia project said. Ethiopia is a landlocked country. The two-lane motorway to the port in Djibouti is almost the only outlet for Ethiopia's import and export trade. A single traffic accident can create major congestion in the country's economy. Currently, a huge number of goods are waiting to be transferred from Djibouti to Ethiopia. Let's move on to the international level. David Cameron is urging the MPs to back UK airstrike against Daesh in Syria saying that the terrorist organization is using sanctuary of northern Syria to launch plots with deadly interests against the British people. Let's hear with more explanations. Minister denies claim it would make the UK a bigger target for terror attacks as he made the case for military action in the Commons. He told MPs the UK was already a target for ISIS and the only way to deal with that was to take action now. The UK could not outsource our security to allies and it had to stand by France, he added. A common vote is expected within weeks or whether to authorize airstrike. The Prime Minister is urging MPs to back military action as he set out a comprehensive strategy to tackle the Islamic State. He published his response to a recent Forenza Affairs Committee report on airstrike ahead of his speech, saying, The threats of our interest and to our people are such that we cannot afford to stand aside and not to act. Mr. Cameron is expected to tell MPs decision to use force are not to be taken lightly. It is right that Parliament, on behalf of the people, ask difficult questions and hold the government to account. The Forensic Affairs Committee report set out a number of tests it said should be met before airstrike were considered. The committee said there should be no military intervention without a coherent international strategy on tackling ISIS and sending Syria civil war. Mr. Cameron, whose statements come just under a fortnight since the terror attacks in Paris, which, will, which killed 130 people, will need to convince enough MPs for other parties to back these, his case in order to offset any conservative rebel. Still in Europe, a clash over natural gas pricing between Russia and Ukraine escalated on Wednesday with Russian exporter Gazprom announcing it will halt deliveries in Kiev saying it could find cheaper supply from Europe. More details in this report. The round in the almost annual row over gas pricing has begun between Russia and Ukraine. Russian exporter Gazprom has announced its halting deliveries to Q until it receives a new prepayment. In response, Ukraine Prime Minister Arseniy Atsinyuk said the country will look elsewhere for supplies. We've taken this decision primarily because we receive better offers from our European partners which were significantly better than those from our eastern neighbors. For now, Kyiv says it doesn't need any more Russian gas and will guarantee the transit of piped Russian gas bound for Europe. The European Commission says it is not concerned right now, even though it relies on Russia for about a third of its gas. Moscow and Kyiv have clashed repeatedly over recent years and Russia annexation of Crimea has severely strained ties. Tension put under renewed pressure by Ukraine's decision to close its airspace to Russian flights. About natural disaster, a hole almost the side of a football field has opened up at a bar on North Stradbourne Island of South East Queensland. Senior lifeguard Michael Bates said the beach had collapsed on the southern side of the island this morning. Let's see with more details. Football field has opened up on island of Southeast Queensland. Surf life saving Queensland has warned swimmers to stay away from the hole, which has swallowed part of the beach of North Stratesburg Island. A spokeswoman 
said the sinkhole was about 100 meter wide and has opened up on Wednesday. She said it was quite a distance away from any patrollers area and lifeguard were urging people to stay and keep clear. There are really strong current in the water and the sand is quite unstable, she said. In September, a hole swallowed a caravan, car trailer and tents further north at near Rainbow Beach. That event was described as a nearshore landslide event rather than a true sinkhole. This is it for tonight's news. Thank you for your attention and have a wonderful evening.